Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I see we have some people already logged on. Avery and Parker. Hello, hello. Um, I think we're going to be welcoming welcoming some school students today. So hopefully they are able to come. So let me move that a little closer to me so I can read something. So hey, everyone. We're making a bird today. Let me hold it up for you. I'm going to do some more collage. This one I did, Parker, on a stick, but I think today I'm going to make mine have a nest. What do you think? Good idea? And then I wanted to show you what we're going to do next week. We are making this really big dinosaur. So save your cardboard for next week so you can make a giant dinosaur. Oh, they're watching through YouTube, Lindsay, so I won't be able to talk to them or read their comments. Okay, that's excellent. All right, so then we should get started. Um, today we're going to be making a bird on a stick or a bird on a nest or a bird on a wire. You get to decide what kind of, what kind of um, item you want them to be sitting on and also what kind of bird you're going to be making. Have you guys been watching the birds outside lately? I have seen crows and I have seen robins and chickadees and blue jays. So before you start your bird, think about what kind of bird you want to make. This bird that I made here looks kind of like he's brown. He kind of looks like he might be, I don't know, like a nut hatch or something. I thought today I might make a robin. So now a robin has a brown body and a red breast. And I don't know, Parker, I think you should try to make a blue jay because then you can make him blue. What do you think? Might be a good idea. Or a crow would be really super cool. So if you're all ready, things you're going to be needing are uh, some paper, some cardstock for the back. Um, today I'm going to have a blue background from the one I'm making today. You're going to need um, some kind of paper like scrapbook paper, different um, colors for uh, for your bird for cutting out, and some markers, and of course scissors and glue. So if you're all ready, let's get started. I have today blue paper. And I want to make his body. So this bird's body is kind of pear shape. So if you have a hard time drawing, you can use something round to kind of trace around. So this might be a bit big for my paper. I won't have any room for my nest because today I decided I want to make a nest. So I found this container. And that's not bad. That's a pretty good roundy shape. Now I don't want to make it perfectly round, but that will help me out. So get your pencil. And I have my item that I'm going to be tracing around. And now I need to decide what color I'm going to make the body of my bird. And I've chosen this brown polka dot paper. And if I flip it over, it's white. So this is a perfect spot where I can um, draw with my pencil to make the shape of my bird. So now remember, I kind of want a pear shape. Put that there so you can kind of see. So I'm going to put my circle here. I'm going to make a rough shape around him like that. But now I want him to have a fatter head so I have another smaller circle. So I'm just going to overlap a bit just to get the shape. And I'm just going to connect them like that and make them look like a pear. And I think I'll trace over this with a marker so you can see better. Because my pencil is very light. All right. So this is my shape. Remember, I want a pear shape. And it sounds like they've started cutting the grass outside. So if you're hearing a funny noise, that's what it is. 
All right, so now this pear shape is skinnier than the bird that I made here, but this bird I put on a stick and this time I wanna make a nest. So I'm making my bird a little bit smaller. So here's my shape. I'm gonna get my scissors. I'm gonna cut them out. Parker, have you decided what bird you're making? Oh, hello, Delaney. Um, have you decided, Parker, what color bird you're making? You're gonna make a crow. I think a crow would be cool too. But I wanted to have a nice red breast, so I decided to do a robin. So using your best cutting techniques, you guys know how to use your scissors. Remember, you want your thumb facing the sun. Wants to go up. Trace around, cut around your line. And you can also tear scrapbook paper too. It looks cool if you tear things. So there's his body. I'm not gonna glue things down yet. I'm just gonna get it all placed so I can figure out what goes first and what goes last. Now, uh, it's nice to have some little fun feathers poking out of the top. So just on the scrap that was left on my paper, I'm going to use that just to make kind of like a fun, funky fringe. So I want them to be kind of cute. So it's kind of like a triangle. Maybe I'll make some waves. It'll look more feathery. Like that. And I can put that behind. So there's that. Now a robin has its super cool. Oh, Parker, you're making a blue jay? Excellent, I can't wait to see your blue jay. Now we want to make his red breast or uh, another color, depending what kind of bird you're making. So I have to figure out what size I want. Now I want this bird to have a nice big fat red breast. So I've got my circle here. That's about a good size. I'm going to do the same thing. I've got my red paper. I'm going to flip it over, put that on, and trace around. And besides scrapbook paper, other papers that you can use are things like magazines, pictures out of magazines, stuff like that. That works excellent. All right, so that's very much a circle shape. I want to make it a little bit more oval when I cut it I can just make it a little bit more wonky flatten that circle out a little bit maybe I will I'm gonna make it longer on one end just gonna give him a fatter tummy Parker, blue jays have super big um, crowns here. So you could give yours like a really jutty out, jutting out crown of feathers at the top. That will look super cool. Let's finish cutting my circle. My ellipse shape. It's looking a little bit uneven there. There, what do you think? That looks pretty good. I really like that. Okay, so our next thing we we'll want to do is I think I'm going to cut um, some eyes. Now, I don't know. What do you think? I think I might try to find some yellow paper to make yellow eyes. I'm trying to think if robins have yellow eyes. Does anybody know? Have you been looking at robins? I don't have a lot in my yard. So I haven't been staring at them too much. I have yellow and I have gold. What do you think, Parker? Do you think it should be yellow or gold for his eyes? Have any thoughts on the matter? Yellow. I'm kind of leaning towards this yellow. What, what color eyes are you going to make, Parker? Let's see. So I'm going to make mine. I want my eyes to be big. 
So I'm going to cut two squares, and I'm going to fit a circle inside the square. I'm going to cut them both at the same time so that they're the same. Gold, excellent. Parker, good choice. I think gold is the way to go, too. I'm just going to cut round and round. Because a circle fits perfectly inside of a square. Oh yeah, look at that. Those are good. Now, a beak. I think their beaks are kind of yellow. Maybe I'll make my beak yellow. Yellow or black? I don't know. I have some black. Oh, I have some gold too. It's always fun to keep all your scraps. I can make a gold beak. A black beak or a yellow beak? Hmm. Any votes? Parker, what color are you making yours? Are you making yours black? I don't know. I think I might go with black. It's always good. It's always good. Black. Black beaks. I wonder what color a robin's real beak is. I want my beak to be quite long and kind of dramatic. So I'm going to make a rectangle. There. So that goes, that'll go from under his eyes. I'll put his eyes over top all the way down to his belly. So once I have the size I want, then I'm just going to snip a rectangle shape just like that and I might even save these little pieces because they may work they may work for feet all right there we go that looks good now I might want to put a different color Parker says black Avery says yellow I did black, Avery, sorry. I could put a little yellow streak on afterwards. So that goes there, that goes there. I might cut a little bit of more feathers for the top. I want something that is a contrast. So this is fairly dark. So if I put something light, it's going to show up better. So I'm going to look in my pile of things and see what I have. I have some green. What else? Let me get my pile. So many pack pieces of paper I have. I hope you guys are all keeping stashes of paper like this too to do collage. Collage is super fun. I can't remember if I introduced myself to all the new kids. Delaney, uh, I'm Heather. I do the Mini Mag program here at the Red Deer Museum and Archives, or <laughs> it's not archives anymore, Museum and Art Gallery. What do we think? Light brown? No, that's kind of boring. Should we get something racy? How are you doing on yours, Parker? What kind of bird is Avery making today? Ooh, yellow stripe, that might be fun. Parker says he's making, um, oh, Parker is making a blue jay and Avery is making a black bird with an orange, with orange what, an orange beak or orange eyes? And Delaney, oh yes, Miss Morgan, I forgot that you have a Spanish class. So, hola. I did take some Spanish, but I've forgotten it all because I haven't used it in the last couple years. And so I don't remember. There, I have a couple options. I have stripe, and I've got one that's got some blue in it. That stripe is pretty nifty. I think I'm going to use that. 
So I just want to make a little area inside of his feathers that will look kind of feathery. So I'm going to use the same kind of shape that I made the top with. It's like a rectangle, or sorry, like a triangle. And I'm going to cut some V, roundy V shapes. How's everybody in uh, your class doing? Avery says she's making black with orange wings and a red breast. Oh, that's um, a red-winged blackbird. The ones that are in the marshes right now. I was watching the Dews last night, and they were telling the story about a red-winged blackbird, blackbird Avery. In Edmonton, there's, there's one that every year, him and his mate have a nest. The, the female red-winged blackbird is actually brown. He doesn't look, she doesn't look anything like, like the male. And they have a nest and he's protecting it. And he dive bombs everybody that comes by. Okay, so we've got mainly our pieces. Anything left that we're missing is a tail. Now, on this bird, I had his tail going down. I have a stick and I have some feet. I am going to make a nest for mine. So the tail won't show if I make it go down. So I'm going to make a tail that comes up the top. And the tail is just kind of a triangular shape. If you make a big triangle, then it can poke underneath. And I'm going to make it out of the same color as my bird's body, but you don't have to. It can be any, any of the papers that you have that you'd like. So I want my tail sticking up like this. So I'm going to cut a piece. It's a bit smaller so I can manage it. Remember, I flipped it over so I can draw on it. I think I want it to be about that size. So I'm just going to make a rectangle just so I know what size roughly. I can always finesse it afterwards so that's roughly the size I want. I want the top to have a V Sometimes birds have V-shaped tails. Not always. Different birds have different shaped tails. Like a raven's tail is different than a crow's tail, even though they look similar. That's one of the ways you can tell, tell them apart. And then I'm just going to cut kind of like an arrow shape, the end of an arrow, like that. And I'll be able to tuck that underneath and place it wherever I want. Maybe I'll move my bird like that. There. We're getting there with our bird parts. Next thing we need, I think, are if you're going to have um, a tree branch for it to sit on, you need to cut out a tree branch. I'm going to make a nest. So to make a nest, I'm going to make um, another big circle to put behind my bird. And I think I want my nest to be kind of darker. Let's just see what I have for paper. Or I could make it crazy color, purple or something. But I think I have some dark kind of charcoal. What about that? That's kind of even stripey like a nest. So again, I'm going to flip it upside down. I found a circle that's about the size that I want. About like that. So I'm going to put it on my paper. Trace around the outside. Avery's adding wings. Oh, yeah, because you've, you're having the red wings. So perfect, Avery. That's a good idea to have wings. You could do an eagle would be cool. He could have a white head and a brown body. 
bald headed eagle or a seagull. Seagulls would be cool. They'd be more white. I'm just going to cut the circle out. I may change the shape to be a little flatter after I cut it. But we'll start off with this and see how it looks. All right, let's see if I have this nest behind my bird. Like that. I may make it just a little bit flatter on one side. More like that. Let's see. That looks good. And now the last thing I'll need is a branch for my nest to be sitting on. And I'm going to make it out of this yellow paper because it's, it's cute. Now branches are um, organic. They come from a live tree. And so instead of cutting mine with scissors, I'm going to tear it so it's kind of rough and jagged like a tree branch would be. You don't always have to cut and tear. How are you guys doing? Are you beating me, Parker? Or are you still keeping up? Or are you behind? Same with you, Avery. How are you doing? Sometimes, depending um, on your paper, it will tear really easy easily in nice long strips or sometimes it goes in jagged chunks like this. Mine's going like jagged chunks, but that's all right. It all depends what grain of paper I happen to have because paper has um, a grain because it's made out of wood. And they, they mush it all up and they put it into a press and they make paper out of it. Flat and thin. But within it is all these paper fibers. There we go. There. And I think I'm going to angle mine a little bit like that. Okay. I'm going to maybe start gluing the main parts of my bird together. Parker says he's beating me. Oh, he always does. He's so fast. He's a speed demon. Okay, so now it's time to start doing a little bit of gluing. We can add more to it afterwards. More collage pieces. But now you need to think about what needs to get glued down first. So my bird is on top of my nest and my nest is on top of my tree branch. So that means I need to glue down my tree branch first. Now, if you are making a bird like this one, my bird is on top of the branch, but look, his tail is underneath the branch. So in this one, I had to glue my tail down first and then the branch and then the bird. So figure out your sandwiching, which needs to go on first. So for mine, it's my branch. Another good tip I want to give you is when you're gluing, if you have an old magazine or a newspaper or something like that, use that as your messy mat. That way you don't get glue everywhere and you can just turn the page when it gets all sticky, start on a new page. Okay, I've got my branch, I've got my messy mat. I'm going to put my glue stick, cover it with glue. And my branch, I'm going to have angling up because usually branches grow in that direction. I'm going to have the tip hanging up like this so the edge isn't totally on over. I'm going to smooth it down. Don't worry if it hangs over a little bit on the edge because we can trim that off afterwards. So my branch, now I'm going to put my nest on, move my bird over here. I want my nest sitting on top of my branch. That. So 
So I'm going to glue that on my messy mat. Make sure you got get lots of glue on your edges, especially. Put glue all over. Okay, remember I made one edge a little bit fl flatter, so I want that at the back. I did get a little bit of glue on my on my nest right here. That'll be covered by my bird. But I'm just going to turn the page on my messy mat so I don't get any more glue on the rest of the pieces that I'm gluing. Now rub that down really good. You get all your edges stuck down. One of my favorite birds are chickadees. A chickadee would be really cool. They're the ones that are gray and they have that little black cap with um kind of like a, a little black and white face. They kind of look like little raccoon, raccoon birds. Now I'm going to do my um, tail and my bird. First I'm going to figure out how I'm going to put it because I'm going to have to put my tail on before I put the bird. So you got to wiggle it around and figure out exactly how you want it placed. My tail, maybe I want my tail more like that. Okay, that looks good to me. Now take your bird off. You have to remember where you're going to put it. Let's see if I remember. My memory's not so good. Avery bent her wings to look like it's flying. What a good idea, Avery. You have such good imagination. We've got his tail on and now it's time for his body. But you know, don't forget I have this little crest I want to put on and I want him to go under. So I might even just glue this crest onto my bird body or I could glue my bird down and leave a little spot here so I could tuck it under. I think I'm just going to glue it onto my body so then I won't have to worry about trying to figure out where he's going to fit. My, the crest of on my bird makes him kind of look like a moose. <laughs> oh, he's protecting his eggs. Avery says the wings are out because he's protecting his eggs. That's good. Just like that bird up in Edmonton. I know I live in Sylvan Lake and I know that the people complain about um, on the walking path, there's some birds that get quite aggressive trying to scare people away. I think it really depends on the birds. Last year, there were these birds called gra grackles. I don't know if you've ever seen a grackle before. They're black, but their body is iridescent. So it's shiny with purple and and green, it's like an oil slick, only that's what their feathers are like. And they have these lily kind of scary yellow beady eyes. And they had a nest in the, in the garden right beside where I live. And they would totally <laughs> dive bomb us, especially when the cat was outside. So we used to, I used to take the umbrella out when I was on the deck reading and I would have to put the umbrella over my head so that I could be safe because I'm pretty chicken of birds. Okay. I think I'm going to do um, the other part of his little crest. Now I made him a little bit tall, so I'm just going to tear it off and make it shorter. There, I like that better. When you're gluing little bits and pieces, they can be finicky. Careful. He's got his little, and then I'm going to put on his big fat robin red breast. I don't know about blue jays. There are their whole bodies blue. They must be. I can't actually ever remember. I only remember blues. They may have blue body complete because quite often birds have different colored breasts. 
and the rest of their bodies. There. And now I'm going to put on eyes. reading comments. Now again the beak is going to have to go on first because it's going to I want it to cover up the little edges like that. So I figure out where I want it and then taking that off. I want it to hang over a bit so that looks good. We have his beak, then his eyes. I'm going to have to put something black or a color or a googly eye in his eyes. Parker, are you doing googly eyes or are you going to make your own pupil? There. I might just use a marker. That's looking not bad. Let me put his little eye in there. I'm going to have him looking up, I think. I'm going to try it with a marker first. And then if I don't like it, I can always add something on top. There. That's not bad. Now, because I made a nest, I'm going to add some little chunks of paper to look like pieces of the nest. Oh, Delaney, you're using googly eyes? I know. The googly eyes are a winner. It's hard not to want to use googly eyes. It's one of our favorite things here at Mini Meg is googly eyes. Oh, look at that. I have some sandpaper. That would be cool. good thing about nests are they're just a whole conglomeration of different things that the bird has picked up. So you can use pretty much any little scraps that you have hanging around. And I'm going to cut them into um, long rectangles, I think. There. Got a collection. My scissors out. Yes, Ave or Lindsay, I know that Delaney is her teacher. So I'm just going to cut some pieces like this that kind of look like chunks that a bird would use to make his nest. I'm going to use different links and pieces. Is anybody else making a nest or is it just me? Avery and Parker, are you making a nest or are you making a stick? Have you decided? Avery, do you know what a nest is in Spanish? We could do a little schoolwork while we're here. I don't know. I don't even remember what bird is in Spanish. Avery and Parker are both doing nests. Delaney's doing a nest sitting on a branch. Excellent. So we need Delaney, Ms. Morgan, to tell us how you say Robin in Spanish. Parker is not finished already. Are you really? He's so speedy. Okay, so I have a bunch of little pieces for my nest, and I'm just going to glue them on, going around. Oh, I don't want that. Here. As little sticks. Avery knows those words. Okay, Avery, I understand you know what robin is and bird is in Spanish. Get your mom to type it down so that we can find out what it is. <laughs> A 
Lindsay, does does Avery remember what it is? I'm wondering now. I don't think I ever learned any bird names. <laughs> she should know nest and bird. Okay, Avery, what's nest and what's bird? Come on, don't let us down. <laughs> no answer yet. Oh, bird is Payero. Payero, is that right? Payero? I don't know if she remembers what nest is. Am I saying it right? Payero? It was spelled P-A-J-A-R-O. J is like an H. That's right. Payero. Pajero. Sorry. Pajero. Is that better? Nest is Nido. Nido. Cool. How's everybody else's birds going? Well, Parker's done already. Or so he says. I think he might be teasing me. He's always a speed demon. I don't know if, you, if everybody knows Parker. He is one of my mini bag friends, and he is also Avery's brother. And he's a speed demon. How's my nest coming? It's looking not bad. I even have some sandpaper pieces here I found. Adding that. Parker, don't don't stop yet because we need to do some drawing on our picture. Here, I'm gonna finish up and then we can start doing some drawing. Oh, Avery, your teacher said good job that you remembered. Okay, I'm gonna stop with my pieces. And I want to use um, some pencil crayons or pastels to do some drawing on my picture. And also some marker. So it's super fun to go on top of your picture now, <coughs> excuse me, and add some details. And you can do it with a marker. So like I could pretend that I sewed on his little breast by putting little stitch marks around the outside. So this is just a, an extra fine tip sharpie. Oh, I should add some, some blue eggs too. Maybe I'll do that after. And I could do the same thing on his eyes because that can kind of look neat. Look like his eyeballs are sewn on. There. I can also do things with pastels or pencil crayons. I don't know if you guys have used pastels. They're kind of oily and they don't ever really dry completely. So we can, and we've got lots of cool colors and we can draw patterns on our paper. So my paper is just plain blue and I think I want to make it look kind of like wallpaper just for fun. So I'm going to use something that Here's a nice green. You can try that. I'm just going to make some like kind of star shapes. I'm going to pretend like it's wallpaper. So I'm going to make this pattern all down my sheet. Wallpaper usually is a pattern. 
So we just continue doing it. I'm making mine kind of stripey. See stripes going down strips. Just gives it a little bit of visual interest adding more pattern to your piece of work. Different kinds of shapes you could draw on. You could make lines, squig lines, stripes, polka dots. You're using pastels, Lindsay? Excellent. So Parker and Avery are going to try out pastels. They're super fun because they can be used on almost anything. They'll go on top of things and show up. Markers wouldn't show up very well on this colored paper unless you had like, uh, there are some markers that are kind of gel markers that show up better, but most markers don't show up that great. And you could use different colors and so I'm just using one color You could have all different colors that you're making. You could have a whole bunch of little rainbows all over. You know, Avery likes rainbows. This is going to be a very patterned piece by the time we're finished. There. I wonder if I could add something in the middle. Does that show up? That color doesn't show up too well. Let's try the screen. Oh, I'm going to add a little green, a lighter green circle into my pattern. Make it look kind of like little green flowers. Now, I don't know if you've been reading um, as we've gone along, but we're making some kits, some art kits here at the museum for all of the um, projects that we're doing in in, in June. I've made, I have a few art kits made up that have all the supplies in it. So if you don't want to go out and try to find your own supplies, you can buy a kit that contains everything that you would need. Pretty much. The only thing you would need yourself is hot glue and maybe a pencil or some markers. We'll see. But everything pretty much is there. There. Okay, I really like how the back of that turned out. It's kind of nifty. And now I'm going to add some, I'm going to add some more black marks because I really like to add lines to my, this is like a multimedia piece. So that means you have more than one kind of thing. So instead of just paper, we also have markers and collage and we've torn it and we've cut it. We're adding all different elements to it. And we've got pastel. That's what multimedia means. And I really like to add lines. And I also really like to like just go around things. Make squiggly marks. I'm going to add some feathers to his tail. And I'm going to add a few marks on the feathers of his head. And I'm also going to do, do some jaggy edges around the nest because I like how the nest would be like that with things poking out. And for my stick, I could add some swirls like wood grain. I might do it in black because it's so dark. Just some little marks like that. You could also add some color to your bird. 
What do I have in here for colors? I've got a lighter color. See how that shows up? I could put a line on his beak. Go around, give him kind of like eyebrows. That's the joy of pastels. They show up so well. I can make part of my, the breast of my robin a little bit lighter. So it looks round. Give it a little shape like that. Maybe a little squiggle here. His eyes look, I don't know, Parker, his eyes almost looks like he needs to have googly eyes. What did Parker say? He would like his bird in South Africa. You know what would be cool is to do a bird like this, um, like a toucan or a parrot. It could be look really nifty. But I wanted to add some eggs. So I forgot to do that. So I'm just going to cut a little bit of a roundy part make an egg kind of poking in there to do some some super duper cutting to make them fit there's one yeah you could do a rip or if you did a peacock oh a peacock would be super neat there we're gonna have a little egg or two popping up is anybody else putting eggs in theirs I know lots of people did nests. We're almost finished. I'm going to have this one tucked underneath a little bit. There. I'm going to put one more in, I think. Or, you know, what else would look really is like an emu, something like that. That would be funny. You can make a really funny looking emu. Or a penguin. Oh, my gosh. There's so many great birds. Penguins don't usually have nests like this, though, do they? Where am I going to put this one? I'm going to put it right there. I think I need one more. So we're almost finished. Oh, and I, um, the kits, I think Lynn said they cost $30. Yeah, $30 for five. There's five lessons for, for June. And it has paint and all your supplies that you would need. Okay, now that I'm into making these, these eggs, I just want to keep making more and more. I wonder how many eggs robins usually have. Avery added a tree with a branch, and the branch is the bird and the nest with eggs. Oh, nice. Yeah, there. That's perfect. I need one more. I'm going to put that one there. Oh, looks so good. And I might just put a little piece on top to make it hide away. There. So I think I'm done. If you got finished your bird, please post your pictures. Um, if you do it on Facebook or on YouTube, just do a hashtag Red Deer Museum and Art Gallery so that we can see it. It will show up on our feed. Let's have a look. I'm going to put mine two side by side. So one with nest and one on a stick. There we go. So uh, like I was showing earlier, next week we're making the dinosaur. So you need to have a big piece of cardboard. And then if you have any sticky foam, that's what I made my shapes out. Then I didn't have to glue them on. Just sticky foam that I cut into different shapes. But you could also just use regular foam or just uh, paper, scrapbook paper glue on. And think about what dinosaur you want to make. I've got two different faces. 
And uh, you might want to have a look at their silhouettes. You can Google the silhouettes on, um, on Google and see what shape that they are. So you can, you'd be able to trace out on the cardboard. All right, I think we're done. I hope everybody had a super good day. And I look for, next week I think Holly's going to be here. I was supposed to go on vacation, but you know, COVID. So be having vacation at my house. But uh, Holly will be here and uh, you'll be making those giant big dinosaurs. So have a super good day and um, tweet, tweet. It's all good? Yeah. Did you leave the studio? Yeah. Okay. Well, on that one, but not on this one. I just realized I put the little bumpy thing out and I did.